in Ezekiel 34, 11, God says, I myself will search for my sheep and I will look after them. And that is exactly what he has done in my life. I was 14 back in Iran. I was visiting my aunt in a summer afternoon. And there came a missionary, a pastor missionary from Billy Graham Association that shared the gospel with my mom, with my aunt and grandma over there. And I was a teenager. Our culture, we're not, we weren't supposed to be involved, you know, or even in the room with the grown-ups. In the other room, I was just listening in. And all my life, I was around, you know, Persian friends that they always asked me if Christ was the Son of God, then why did God allow him to die on the cross? I had no answer. Then I realized it was, he loved me. It was because of, because of my sins. And that started my journey with Christ. The, our entire family was, you know, became born again and we accepted Christ. We started attending a church and it was a beautiful fellowship. I learned how to read the Bible, understand the Bible. And soon after, 10 months after, uh, the country of Iran started to change and there were so many terrorism, domestic terrorism, and uh, the revolution was about to start. And I was the only daughter of my family and my parents decided to send me to America on a student visa because my uncles were here in California. So I headed 1978 to the United States on a student visa. And soon after the monarchy was overthrown from Iran and the cleric, Islamic cleric regime was established and their theocracy has continued to this day which that, you know, prevented me to ever go back to Iran. So with that mindset, I was stuck here without my parents, homesick, new culture, new language. So as a baby Christian, I was immersed in the Word of God. He was my dad, he was my brother, he was my friend. He was that familiar friend to me in a foreign country. And that story continued, and my dependence on him continued over the years through many challenges in life. More so when I became a young mom and I had my boys, they were 17 months apart. They were pre in preschool when I was diagnosed with my first brain tumor. And then it was such a shock. My world was changing. And I didn't know what, would, what the outcome would be, except I just, cried out to God, please give me the opportunity to raise my boys. And he did by God's great, you know, abundance graces, he did. Uh, for 10 years, I was healthy. I was active in their lives. I was a hockey mom, soccer mom, room mom. And I raised them with the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the, the gospel message and in a church environment. And that dependence on the Word of God grew increasingly. When, you know, when they grew older and they started drifting away from the Word of God and God had so many things in plan for me. I mean, through the Word of God, you learn how to, how to process the, the bleak scenarios of life. Uh, I lost my dad 2001 to a gun, gunshot. He was caught in a crossfire. He was my tower of strength. He was my friend. He was a true Christian, a peaceful one. I don't know, every, every problem I had, I always had to go to him. As though my anchor was lost in the sea. So that's how you process. You just trust God. And then soon after, I lost my house to the wildfire of 2008 and we lost our everything and we weren't supposed to come to the rubbles and after we came back there was this miraculous sign i saw in our study our entire bookshelf was burned and i had three versions of bible armenian persian and english they survived the fire and that was an auspicious sign that was beautiful and so we were displaced because of the fire and my boys were rebellious teenagers hanging with the wrong crowds and 
When, when that thing happened to a Christian mom, you are on your knees every day, you're praying, you're crying, you're asking God, and you're trusting that He's listening to you, that one day they'll come back to Christ. And that was my main mission. I was trying to make peace with what, whatever I've lost. I was more in the Word of God. I think these intermissions in life, they just drive you more to Christ. You love Him more, you trust Him more, despite the scenarios that you're facing. Right where, where uh, the second year we were there, I was again diagnosed with a recurrence of the brain tumor. This time it was like grade three, which was very serious. I didn't know what the outcome was. When they asked me, am I left-handed or right-handed, I knew something serious was about to happen. So to make a long story short, 2000, year 2000, October, I walked with my, my, with my own feet, went to the hospital, UCLA, and then hours later, I woke up, I couldn't speak. I couldn't see from the left eye. I couldn't move my left side, the leg, the arm. I, I, it was, it was, I was in a, such a pathetic state. And it was a dark place for me. And it was, uh, when I think about my story, it must have been God that I pulled through in the hospital bed in the rehab place that finally, after at least a good year of therapy, I was able to walk, I was able to talk, and everything came back except my left hand. And you rise from the ashes, you learn, and you're back in the kitchen, the same Armenian cook that you were, but with challenges. And you learn that in every movement you have, you have to be dependent on God. And when you're driving, where, whenever you go somewhere, you just always ask God to help you. So for me, dependence was a virtue at that time, and still is. I wish I could stop right here and tell you that that was the end of my story. But there was more by God's grace for me. Right when I started attending this church, I was involved in a ministry, enjoying the sermons, loving the lessons I was learning from Kindred University. I went to ER from a pain and suddenly I discovered I had a big, huge malignant tu tumor on my liver, 2018. And 2019, I was diagnosed with stage three lung cancer. And I've, I've, I've been battling that cancer until today. I've, I've gone through so many heart chemos and so many radiation. And just when I finished the radiation a month ago, I had to go back to UCLA for my annual checkup for the brain tumor. And then they told me that the tumor has returned. So there is the prospect of having another surgery. What suffering has taught me is that God is enough for me, what I face through the challenges of life. I just want to address the sanctuary, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is from my heart, not from my testimony. My brothers and sisters in kindred, my story is your story. The Word of God says that in this world we will have tribulation and we are supposed to be encouraged because Christ has overcome the world. And in the light of the Gospel, we are to be joyful and enjoy the blessing of each day and be a light to this world. In the word of F.B. Meyer, dare to believe that one day you will understand the loving kindness that underlay your darkest suffering and what Spurgeon has said, I just love it. Earth should be a temple filled with songs of grateful saints. Every day should be filled with the sweet incense of thanksgiving. That was from Spurgeon. So my encouragement to you is just be thankful for what God has given me, 
given you today for your family, for your challenges. His grace is sufficient to carry you through. My love to you all. Thank you for this opportunity.